So how do we get there? I've invited my friend Larry Clarkson here to talk a little bit about where we are today and how we're going to move forward with our network topology. So go ahead, Larry. All right, so as we can see in the diagram here, we've shown three typical access networks. And one of the first things to note is that they all use different codecs. Now, as it turns out, there's real good reasons for this diversity of codecs. It might be because of heavy compression or an enterprise, say, trying to squeeze capacity out of a P1. Or in a wireless network, where in addition to compression, they need sophisticated error correction to mitigate signal degradation. Even battery life can play a factor. Also, commercial factors are also in play. Skype developed Silk to avoid paying royalties on their free client, and similarly, Microsoft developed RTA so they didn't have to pay a royalty with a bazillion copies of Windows. So, Larry, if, if, if they use different codecs and each one of the different networks, how do they interoperate today? Well, the truth is that they don't. Each of the access network uses a media gateway to convert to PCM, and then they connect to the PSTN core. No kidding. So I think right now, what you're saying is that the PSTN is sort of the universal translator, converting from one to the other. Exactly. And that's <clears throat> one of the hurdles that's faced HD so far, since the PSTN can't pass wideband. Wow, interesting. Well, you know what else, Larry, is that we've um, also found from uh, talking to some of our carrier customers that they've been wanting to peer using their IP infrastructure, so put the voice services over IP. You know, they've been telling me things like they'd like to be able to do is uh, eliminate some of the equipment, they'd be able to save some costs, like to reduce some of the taxes that they pay and the tariffs that they pay. So if, if these different networks use different coders, when they go to IP, how are they going to connect back and forth between each other? Well, when there is a difference in codec, we insert a wideband-enabled transcoding gateway. And this is sort of like back-to-back -back media gateway, except that the voice isn't compressed into a 64 kilobit voice stream between the two sides. So one wideband codec can be translated directly into another. It's this wideband-enabled transcoding gateway, along with wideband-enabled media servers, that turn uh, high-definition voice from a technical novelty into a practical reality. And the bonus is, if you're using audio codes gateways today for your IP to PSDN traffic, you can repurpose those tomorrow to handle your transcoding gateway needs. Great. Well, let's, um, let's show folks what we've got here as part of our demonstration. So we've got some equipment here in the uh, countertop. Why don't you walk us through it? All right, well, we have three handsets representing three different kinds of access networks. We have a SIP client running a mobile handset connected by Wi-Fi radio. We have a, a DEC CAT IQ phone, and we have an IP HD phone from Audio Codes connected to the PA system, so you can hear. And finally, we have a uh, Audio Codes Media 3000 performing the transcoding gateway and media server capabilities. Great. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look at our first demo here. So the first call we're going to make is a, a narrow band announcement, and this is similar to what uh, your digital voice customers would hear today. So let's see, that will be an announcement. in a, a wideband format using G.722.
active phones, the conferencing engines, the uh, transcoding resources, you know, these are all now available and ready uh, for deployment. And there are a number of major benefits that we think that are important uh, that you folks should consider. Well, what I'd like to do is invite you folks to come and participate in, with these uh, demonstrations live in our booth at, at the exhibition uh, in the Innovation Showcase uh, Expo, where you can hear these with your own ear, and they sound really nice when you hear them on a the handset. Obviously, uh, with a the theater here, sometimes it's hard to hear. So with that, I'd like to thank you and thank Cable Labs for having us here as part of the demonstration. So thanks again.